the Gita is there, focus only on Gita. All else is just stories. Gita is not a story. Gita is a philosophical document of the highest order. It is not storytelling. Uh, thank you, Acharya Prashanti, for uh, um, asking, like taking our questions. Awesome. So, um, uh, my question uh, pertains again to public policy. So, we are all unique in our own ways, and we have unique aspirations and needs. So, it's uh, difficult to generalize and categorize us uh, as a like as a whole population into a few buckets of major characteristics. So public policy is a process of mutual collaboration uh, between leaders and public. Both sides are important. Both sides uh, <clears throat> inform each other and uh, um, directs each other for the overall development. So considering this, how can each of us, every one of us, be inspired to develop our inner dimension and contribute to a better society, well-being and economy, and therefore uh, a better public policy for, for our country? Thank you. See, we are not unique. The uniquenesses, the differentiators are all mostly superficial. As you dig a little deeper, what you find is something very, very common. And the commonalities that you find are not very pretty. Uh, what guides us in this lifetime is just the will to somehow eat, live, sleep, procreate. That's the mother instinct. Uh, Vedanta in Srimad Bhagavad Gita calls it as the, as the six tendencies. The six enemies that rule us. So you have, you have anger, you have fear, you have greed, you have lust, you have envy, you have, so, uh, and you have ignorance. So, how exactly are we unique? One person is ignorant, the other two is ignorant. One is misled about his basic identity, just as the other one is. It's just that in one's drunken state, one decides, or what not, there is no decision involved actually, one, one, one tumbles towards the left and the other one is rolling to the right. Now would you say that these two opposite directions denote uniquenesses? No, they both have something much in common, which is that both are drunk and heavily drunk. That's the condition of mankind. We all are, uh, we all are in, a, in a pale of ignorance. So, what ought to be the role of public policy here? Obviously, the first imperative is awakening. And we are not uh, uh, announcing a certain ideal here. We are not talking of the... Uh, contents of the moral science class or, or syllabus of the human values course. We are talking of the most important thing in front of the individual as well as the planet today. The first imperative we are saying is awakening. Awakening to who we really are. If we do not realize that much of that which we call as our self and therefore much of that which we call as our desires are not our own at all, there is no hope. We are at a very peculiar point in the history of mankind. Hmm? We are extremely close to devastation, rather total annihilation. We, we, we need to be shaken up. In fact, we need to be, to be hit before we are 
bulldozed by the inevitable role of time and the principle of results of action karmphal so that's the kind of uh, public uh, policy environment we we need today at every point the individual needs to be reminded all the stuff that pushes us deeper into our stupor needs to be checked regulated taxed all the cultural elements and traditional values or social values or whatever that Uh, further reinforce our deluded identities must be uh, stopped in their tracks before they do any further damage that ought to be the uh, role of uh, public policy you see just as uh, the general public we are saying is is living mm, in a haze of uh, internal haze so are the policy makers because the policy makers come from the public and hence the policy itself is very very deluded because it does not know what to achieve you can have very sharp minds who do the numbers you can have very diligent and efficient people who carry out the execution but you require a sage a knower a saint to set the vision is the vision there do we first of all realize what ought to be the very purpose of public policy because you see when you say policy there is something that you want to achieve and if there is something that you want to achieve you must first of all know where you stand i must know where i am before i decide where to go do we know who we are where we stand what our condition is like do we really know that no the answer is a clear no not the man on the street and not the man in the parliament nobody really knows those who knew are very few and far between and they have been further marginalized by the kind of flak religion has drawn in these times we have uh, as the adage goes thrown away the baby with the bath water hmm? along with uh, organized religion we have discarded the most life giving thing that we can have core spirituality its core spirituality that should uh, sit at the top and the bottom of all public policy public policy can't just be about uh, better infrastructure or social amenities or this and that i may have a great car of what use it is if i do not know where to go if it's okay can i ask a follow up question of course of course most welcome so um the nudge theory uh says that uh, there can be certain indicators that can be uh, implemented in public policy that can you know direct the behavior um, of the general public of everyone so can we have a nudge that directs us inwards as you just said and that can as as a policy tool so uh, this question comes from me and professor sadeep patra See, unfortunately we are all just uh, too thick skinned to be 
moved by mere nudges the nudges are all there and they are there in everyday life itself you see how we attempt to do one thing and end up doing something totally different how we misread people and situations how we get into something hoping for one kind of result and the result we obtain is just something else does that not happen that happens in our professional domains that also happens in our personal domains so those things are happening all the time but we are very stubborn people and the reason lies in our bodies bodily we all are i like to say just emerging from the jungle so our fundamental instincts are still very animalistic gentle nudges subtle hints polite pointers just do not work they just don't work when we step out of our houses how many trees do we see not to a sensitive mind this itself would be a very strong indicator not merely a strong indicator that person might actually be shaken up remember the story about the shakyamuni buddha he was going to the youth festival and all that he saw was a sick man an old man and a dead man and these are everyday sights yet he was so sensitive that even these normal sights were enough to make him conclusively realize that there is something very very wrong with the way we are living and so he took an entirely different path not do we take different paths we get stuck in traffic jams every morning no a person who intends to know what life is all about would have a complete revelation every morning <laughs> and the revelation is even half complete you do not require too many mornings like that hmm? we, we we return and then we switch on the tv and you know the kind of crap that's thrown at us from there is that not sufficient to tell us uh, our reality who we are and where we come from and therefore what we are headed towards we have a very unfortunate tendency or rather not even tendency capacity to get adapted hmm? whatever be the conditions the psyche with the ego at its center adapts to that and once you adapt you start calling the situations inside and outside as normal you start thinking that this constant tension and unease within is normal and you start thinking that all the the uh, the atrocities you are witnessing outside of yourself they too are normal none of it is normal all this is more than sufficient to to communicate to us it's all very loudly screaming at us that we are very much in the middle of a disaster yet we behave as if everything is normal we attend weddings we celebrate anniversaries we participate in riots 
we live as if all is hunky dory so i'm not a student of public policy so please excuse me if i do not really appreciate what that theory is about but uh, going by the very little description you gave this is what i got and this is uh, how i can respond uh, i do not know if i know that theory Uh, but i think i reasonably will know the inner condition of mankind uh, that was a like a very intriguing answer so thank you so much